So I watched Velvet Buzzsaw yesterday with my girlfriend and she's right behind the camera. Say hello. Hi. And let me tell you, this movie is just an ugly, aimless, directionless, terrible mess. If you were excited about this movie because it's the same director as Nightcrawler, I'm sorry. Just get rid of any positive expectations and goodwill you had for this movie because after watching Velvet Buzzsaw, I really think that Nightcrawler was just a happy accident and this movie is just a tragic one. Because really, this movie is just that. A terrible train wreck that gets worse and worse the longer you watch it. By the end of the two hour runtime, it's just a terrible mangled mess and you have no idea what happened, no idea why anything happened, and really what the point of it is. Ah! The acting, the plot, the editing, the cinematography, the writing, the satire, anything, anything that could have made this movie a little bit more tolerable, it just doesn't. It doesn't work. But I guess I better start with the plot just so you have some idea of what the hell I'm talking about before I get to more specific points. The plot of this movie is fairly simple. Jake Gyllenhaal here, this beautiful man, he, he finds some haunted paintings, not him entirely, but who cares, it doesn't matter. Somebody finds haunted paintings, puts in a museum, haunted paintings do haunted paintings things, people die, the end. That's the plot of this movie. It's fairly straightforward. It's Final Destination without death. It's just paintings instead. And that's all this movie is. But because of the terrible writing, this pretty fun premise just falls completely off the rails and just falls into a ditch and you want to dig its hole, but whatever, just leave it there. Le leave it decomposing is the best thing you can do. Don't look back. Let the corpse there. Do not call the ambulance. Let it die. But yes, the writing of this movie, it's just... It's so bad. This movie is technically a satire and a thriller with a bit of horror, but that's not my words, that's the producer words. I think it's a satire. I think it's a satire thriller with, a, with some horror. What I would call it was a big waste of time and a big piece of shit. Even though this movie is a satire, I'm pretty sure the only things that work as a satire are completely incidental or just based on the director. Because after watching some of the interviews with him, he sounds just like the people in this movie. So I'm not entirely sure if he noticed that the writer was making fun of him. And if he ends up being the writer, I don't know what happened then, because I the entire satire of this movie just boiled down to rich people doing this. Oh, look at me! I bought a painting with all this money! Ha ha ha! I don't appreciate real art! Look at me! Ha ha ha! I just think about money! Ah, art is just money! Ah! That's the satire of this movie. That's as deep as it goes. Like, the satire feels completely of being deep, interesting, or a little bit funny. Everything about the satire of this movie is just shallow. So after the introductory scene of where you get to see all of these characters acting like gigantic assholes to each other and just being like, oh, I am a snob person who doesn't really appreciate art, but I think I know what I'm talking about. No originality, no courage, my opinion. Well, after those five minutes of an introductory scene, there's nothing else in there. So the satire just completely falls flat because it's so fucking shallow, it ends in five minutes! The director clearly didn't know of how to introduce this satire in any different perspective, so throughout the rest of the movie, you don't even think to yourself that this is a satire. It's just a movie full of assholes waiting for them to die. That's all there is. The only thing I could give to the writing for this movie that is kind of good is just capturing how some of these art people are so pretentious of how they talk about art and basically anything else. But again, that might have been accidental, so I'm not sure who to give credit for. The universe or some guy who was drunk and maybe doing a good job. So the writer who wrote the lines for some of the pretentious talk, good job. The writer who talked about just the pacing, you did a bad job, buddy. You did not do a good job. The pacing of this movie is awful. Really, it's so freaking slow. Throughout watching most of this movie, I kept having to remind myself that it's only two hours long and not some weird timeless void where time does not move forward and I'm just stuck there forever. That's just how slow this movie feels. You're just 
staring at the screen, hoping, just hoping that it finally gets to the credits so you can click away and watch anything else. Really, whatever, I don't care at this point, I'll take whatever, I'm good. Please. The pacing of this movie is just so bad that at points they just kept forgetting to have kills in this killer painting movie. So you're just there staring at the actors doing a terrible job at the acting and you're just not entirely sure what's happening anymore because hey, I thought this movie was about killer paintings. I guess not because we had one killer painting in the first 30 minutes and then we don't have any fucking kills for like 60 minutes and then we have another kill and then no kills for 20 minutes and then we have all the kills at the end of the five minutes. Like, what is that? Who does that? That's not pacing, that's just randomly throwing your kills or whatever they land. That doesn't make sense. And because of the acting is so terrible, there's nothing to do. Like, I really think that at a point in the movie or the shooting, the actors realized that they were just in this awful piece of shit. So they just completely gave up on the acting. Halfway through this movie, there is a drastic, drastic change in the quality of the acting. Like, really, it's quite noticeable. Everybody just gives up. Some people just don't come back to the set. I'm talking about you, Joel Makovich. I, I see you. You just came back from the credits. That doesn't count. I know you left the set. I know you left the set. Don't lie. But I'm saying that most people dr dram dramatically got worse. But there was one actress, just, just one, this one person that... Yeah, this woman's acting was terrible throughout. Every fucking line of dialogue that came out of her mouth just sounded like she just gotten awoke. Awoke? Awakened? I don't know. Whatever. She just woke up from her fucking slumber. Somebody gave her some shots and was like, here, go act. It's like, does my character have any point in this movie? It's like, ah, whatever, just sound asleep. Doesn't matter. Your lines are not well written. And here you go. You sound terrible. People thought she was part of an exhibit. We're trending on Instagram. It's a major hit. And also didn't help that she was dressed like an idiot for most of this movie. Like, all of her costumes are just awful. So I guess that is kind of a transition to my next point, which is just miscellaneous complaints, where let me talk about the cinematography real quick. So the saddest thing about this movie is that the cinematography is the best thing about it. And the reason why that's so fucking sad is that the cinematography, it's so dull. You don't understand. Every fucking conversation, establishing shot, transition shot, reaction shot, anything you can think of that includes cinematography in it is just so boring. All the conversations are just shot, reverse shot, shot, reverse shot, shot, reverse shot. It's maddening to look at it. It's incredibly boring. Sure, in a technical level, there's nothing wrong in the cinematography. It's it's fine, but there's also nothing good about it. It does the barest of bare minimums, and that's probably even being too nice about it. But still, I have to find some positives not to go completely insane. Talking about barest of bare minimums, let's talk about the kills. Because I really think that the only reason that this movie has kills is just because it's a fucking movie about killer Paintings. There is no creativity behind any of the kills. The paintings that are haunting the person in the specific scene have no relation of how they die. You have a painting that has something ominous in it, right? And and you you're saying that these paintings are haunted. So so maybe if you have a painting where somebody's on fire, have the person that is being haunted by that painting catch on fire. You know, have a setup and a payoff. But the movie has none of that. There, there's no setups for the fucking kills. It's just some guy has a painting near him and he gets killed by a different art installation that is not haunted. So the, the paintings themselves don't do anything. They have to affect a different painting to kill the person. Why though? There's ominous paintings right there. Just use them, please. The best word to describe every kill in this movie is just so lame. I almost wish that they didn't show any of the kills because at least that way I wouldn't have come out of this movie disappointed because really the advertisement of this movie includes the best kills in the movie and the kills are not even that good. Look, Velvet Buzzsaw is just another one of those bad, awful horror movies 
that Netflix is just gonna put in their little long catalog of pieces of shit horror movies that some people might watch out of either curiosity or accidents. Somebody drunk at 3 a.m. high as fuck is gonna click on this movie like, whoa man, that movie was so deep, it had paintings in it. That's the only person that might enjoy this movie is some dude, drunk and high at 3 a.m., falling asleep. If he falls asleep halfway through this movie, he's probably gonna have a better experience than anybody else. This movie would not even be fun if you watched it drunk with your friends. It's only in this very specific example that you maybe, maybe have some enjoyment. Any other time you watch this movie, it's probably gonna be an unbearable watch because it feels so goddamn slow, the writing is terrible, the acting is bad, the kills are lame, and the cinematography is so fucking boring, so you just have nothing to watch. If you were wondering if I liked Velvet Buzzsaw, if the title wasn't enough and the last 10 minutes or however long this video is wasn't enough to clear my point, let me tell you, Velvet Buzzsaw is a big piece of shit and you shouldn't watch it. And the only thing that this movie gave to us of any value is fucking Jake Gyllenhaal reaction gifts. So that's something.